Hello everyone. So I think it's live. I think it's the time to uh, to start. Uh, so I'll, I will just share my screen right now. So again, if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer them uh, in the Q and A. And the goal will be really for me to uh, present you ex actually what we are doing on the API term of services uh, front. So I hope you're able to see my slide here. I will be full screen. I will not be able to see a lot of stuff during uh, the, uh, the presentation. So uh, uh, yeah, really the, the goal here is to uh, explain you how we can use the Creative Commons uh, pattern for API term of services and how we can go from human readability to uh, machine readability uh, to that. So where do I speak from? My name is Meji Mejawi. I'm the founder and chairman of the EPI Days Conferences series. So we do uh, 10 conferences a year in 10 different cities. I invite you to go to apidays.io to know more about our events. I'm part of the API Collective, a, a collective of API thinkers and in, and, and uh, uh, community enablers. Uh, I invite you to join to join it by going on theapicollective.com. I'm the founder uh, and CEO of Alias, uh, a company that helped bridge the gap between data protection officers and developers uh, with uh, APIs for GDPR regulation. And uh, uh, I was previously the founder of OAuthIO, an API for identity that has been acquired. And you can follow me or retweet me uh, at uh, Medjawi uh, uh, on, on, on Twitter. My latest publication, so I'm the co-author of the, um, the book Continuous API Management. I also, I've been also a European Commission expert on APIs for government. And our latest report is about GDPR data portability, the forgotten right of data uh, protection. And for the one who are like the first edition of the book Continuous API Management, just to tell you in December, there is there will be a second edition, the re-edition of the book that will be available. Last but not least, I'm the designer of the EPI industry landscape, the 800 companies and, and who provide tooling about APIs that you should focus. And the great news is that uh, most of them, a lot of them and more and more of them are using and part of the Open API initiative um, uh, and Open API uh, specification uh, uh, community. But today I'm here, uh, today I'm here to talk about uh, API term of services toward the Creative Commons model. Uh, it's a project that has been uh, funded by uh, the, the Ford Foundation. It's a one-year project about how we can learn from the current API term of services, how we can uh, actually display them in a way that they're human understandable and human readable, and maybe someday have them machine readable so to have uh, automatic enforcement at runtime. That would be great. And that's the goal of this project of that. That's uh, for one year. If you want to already know more, or if you want to support, sponsor, contribute, you can go on HTTPS opencollective.com slash CC. Okay, so um, I just wanted to start by uh, this quote from Jeff Lawson, CEO and founder of Twilio, one of the most emblematic API company uh, out there. He said the world is getting, is getting broken down into APIs. Actually, the digital infrastructure world that we know. He says, uh, quote, every part of the stack of business that a developer might need to build is eventually turning into APIs that developer can use. E eventually, yes, uh, our digital infrastructure is really about as a service. Uh, so people begins to have software that does interesting stuff and they provide APIs for other to be able to consume it over the network, over uh, the web. And so the idea of this, we see a huge digital transformation by people consuming APIs from each other to build application. So every company is specializing itself by providing one API, one service delivered by an API that will be consumed by others who are also, who are also focusing on one value proposition delivered via service uh, represented by an API. That reminds us a little bit like the, the industrial revolution, right? Where actually we were uh, having hundreds of manufacturers doing one piece, specializing into one piece of the full uh, uh, of the, of the full car in this case. And so the goal of companies was just to assemble these cars, to do supply chain logistics about which one I choose, which one do I integrate, and managing hundreds of business relationship, contractual relationship, and technical relationship to finally build and design the car. We see the same thing in the digital economy. Every company specializing into a specific piece of the software stack and deliver it as a service to others. So um, th this is why we wanted to make the research on what we call the biggest lie of the programmable web. 
Uh, I don't know if you know this term of service didn't read pro project. It's a 10 years old project about reading all the term of services, not API term of services, but like user term of services uh, and say that actually when we agree to the term, it's a lie, nobody reads it. And so they make, they try to make this term of services human readable actually to really understand really fast actually what do you agree when you sign to term of services the goal of the api term of services project is to do that on the api level but we have we have some chances that apis are software apis are um are can be machine described machinely described machine readable so we can really make it happen and not having all the manual work to to do so why API term of services are so, so important? It's true, API since the, the first time the API term was coined in 1968, we believed API was just technical interfaces. You know, it's not just about the design, the specs, it's just about like how, what style do we use? Uh, what, what are the resources? What are the field the response, the errors? We just thought APIs were just a technical interface. But what we found with the appearance, the appearance of the internet and the web that when we begin to use software from someone else consuming its API, there will be a new relationship that just that is go that goes beyond just the technical relationship. It's also more a legal relationship because now you may rely to each other, you may uh, have some uh, some uh, some agreements about what you can use, how much you can use it, and so what defined the not only the technical contract, the interface contract, but also the legal contract between the two entities. And with more and more money on the web, more platforms, more companies, more ecosystems, actually, it seems that APIs are now also product interfaces. You may have heard the word API as a product, you know, to really, because some companies have really mastered the fact to do business directly providing APIs to others, actually providing services delivered by great APIs to others. So now we see that APIs are not just technical interfaces, but they are legal or also legal interfaces and product interfaces. When you match the technical and legal, you have the contract aspect. When you match the legal and the product aspect, you have the reuse aspect. How I can use and reuse actually what's provided to me. What's the framework? And actually, when you match the technical aspect and the product aspect, you have what we call the business relationship about, yeah, what, how do I integrate this technology into my product? Or how do I deliver it? What's the model around it? Welcome in the as a service economy. Or in other words, some, what, some other people are calling the API economy. The API economy where most of the people use what others are building as a service, trusting each other on the runtime, on the performance, and on the ability to keep the contract live and the performance live. So yes, and some companies actually have mastered it. Like this is the valuation of some companies here who just deliver APIs on their product. You know, uh, the services they built just delivered by APIs as product. And you can see that some companies really master this business, legal, and technical aspect of APIs, right? So API term of te API term of services are actually at at key uh, a key element here and at really at stakes, and we will see why. So what we have learned in the past 10 years on API Term of Services, I invite you to comment in the chat. Do you have any idea about what we have learned in the past 10 years? No, you don't know? We've learned it's a lie. It's a lie for many reasons. I will just explain a few ones, but we will see that later uh, when we will see about the, the, the framework uh, we are currently building with the community. It's a lie because just on a business model, for example, some company changed business model. So first, funny, the Google Maps Term of Services used to restrict some businesses. So for example, if you were consuming Google Maps APIs, you were not able to provide another map services. We may understand that they invested a lot of money and they, they want to control the reuse of the data. But it's it, this case, it was also about the pricing. You know, it was free. Uh, it was a freemium tier, freemium aspect. And now they say, okay, now it's paying for everybody. So many, many companies are actually have their, have seen their, uh, their future threat threatened by a business model policy change that they had completely no control out of it. Right, so the business model is is at stake. Another example with the famous company, uh, 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 Twitter. So Twitter in two, in 2012, they they decided that they were not uh, an infrastructure provider; they were a media platform to control the resyndication of the API. They wanted to control the end user experience so they can sell ads. 
and so what they decided, they decided to restrict to 100,000 to 200,000 maximum uh, potential end users of an application with using direct access to the API before doing a specific contract. Funny enough, they, attract, they acquire many companies after that, probably at lower valuation, but you can see some, we estimate that more than 100,000 companies are, and 1 million applications have suffered from this. Funny enough, in 2015, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey apologized and wants to reset relations. You know, so okay, the term of services were enforced too abruptly. Let's do something else. 2008, 2018, Twitter destroyed outside apps again. API most of them use. They explained that it was, of course, for infrastructure uh, reasons. But at some point, you know, you have hundreds of thousands of applications that rely on you. Uh, you promise to keep it alive and you change it for uh, without notice. Uh, not great. Uh, really not great. Again, it was about term of services. If you had read the term of services, you knew that Twitter could revoke your access at any time for any reasons and uh, without notice. So yeah, please read term of services. So yeah, Slade made this great article about the Twitter strategy to become a successful company. It will have to kill the openness that makes it great. The business model of the opening is the closing. And we will see that the API space, it happens a lot of the time. LinkedIn, you know, some uh, startup people links has built this old business on LinkedIn API. And when LinkedIn shut your API access, what do you do? It's really hard, right? Uh, it's really hard to uh, overcome uh, that. In some cases, the startups, some startups have claimed that LinkedIn tried to acquire them at lower price after killing API access. We don't know if it's true or not, but at least this is what, the, why, uh, what, what is in the media. Again, read the term of services. Uh, last one on the BI business model, but funny enough, Google was having you, Google having uh, the Google Flight Services, and in 2011, um, uh, they tried to acquire, they actually acquired QPX, a search engine optimization algorithm for, for flights. The FTC at some point said, okay, you're doing Google Flights, you're a great search engine, you can't kill the API access for all the existing users for at least five years. In, 2000, um, uh, in 2018, uh, seven years, I think it was, yeah. For 2018, actually, Google, when the, 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 the contract the, uh, signed with the FTC stopped, they killed the API access. Of course, it was in terms of services. They have limited time and why they would keep it if they feed the competition about uh, algorithm pricing algorithm for, for airlines. Again, if you rely on this business, actually, you've paid Google a lot to optimize the, the, the algorithm, uh, where actually they cut the API access and you have to redo everything. The solution, uh, one part of the solution is uh, that actually Google has announced now enterprise API label to fix product killing reputation. So funny enough, Google enterprise API label pro uh, promotes high stability, ready for enterprise use and support option available. It's about stability, support, and enterprise level to be sure that it will stay alive, at least for a certain period of time, most of the time, at least seven years in advance. Just to tell you there is a solution, but again, if you have, the, if you have to read the term of services to see that, it will be hard. Another aspect just about business model is API performance and server, server, service level agreements. Yes, when an API is down, how do you manage that? Of course, we all rely on each other, but when your provider is down, how do you manage the thing? On a technical side, you have to wait the service to be back again, but sometimes there are some comp financial compensations that are actually uh, uh, happening, but it's really hard to manage the financial compensation with the company that actually caused the default. They can claim that it was on your fault and on the other fault. So again, there is a contractual aspect for that. One of the solution is like a, a platform like API Experts is doing, um, is like trying to give all the metrics about all the APIs worldwide and give the performance like a third party performance analysis. But again, not everybody can do that. Uh, and at least the API term of services are here to decide if you need to be compensated or not. About the copyright case, you are you heard about the Google versus Oracle copyright case, about how the Supreme Court actually at the end finally saved the software industry from API copyrights. But again, that was really really hard. Uh, and again, if it would, it's in the API term of services about like if the copyright of the API is free or not, or if all the right preserved. Again, it's all about reading uh, term of services. In this case of Google versus Oracle, it was mostly fair use discussion. But again. Please be sure that you read this term of services for that reason. 
and actually as nobody reads them because they're too complex. There are some projects like the API Commons project who try to declare some API patterns and API design into API Commons. But again, who will go to all these places to check for performance, copyright, business model, right? Okay, uh, breaking changes is also one of the most painful part for developers. Again, still after 12 years, Facebook and this big platform still to break APIs uh, that, that, that really break the developer experience of, of, of their community. And again, now these platforms have sometimes three months notice, but in the 2000 to 2015, it was even without notice. The only way to discover it is when users actually are complaining. Again, term of services can say if the companies actually uh, warn this uh, to happen or not. The other solution was to have third-party independent systems who would get API changes or they would get their API change logs. Some projects have happened in the past. Uh, they stopped or and never been taken by others. But just to tell you, there's some solution. But again, as a as an API user, how do you really how how can you really go in all these places to learn what's happening? The last solution for the API breaking change is that some companies adopt a right once run forever policy. Stripe and Salesforce companies, for example, claim that they will never break an API as long as there are users for that API. So they manage sometimes dozens of versions of the same API in the same time, and they only deprecate them and decommission them when there is no more users on this API. They, they try to have you use the, net, the latest version because of new features, never kill an API. That's also a business solution. The technical solution will be to use like hypermedia as the engine of application state patterns or what we call sometimes hypermedia APIs where we will be able to discover through links the latest version of the API. But again, there are some solutions out there, but really hard to manage. Okay, but what would be the, the power of credit command patterns for all these issues? The power will be like as creative, creative Commons does, uh, it's to overcome all legal obstacles of the sharing of knowledge and creativity to address the world's pressing challenges. It's about providing common license and public domain tools to give every person and every organization in the world a free, simple, and standardized way to grant copyright permissions for creative and academic works, ensuring proper attribution, allow others to copy, distribute, and make the use of these works. Do you see the link with APIs? we could do the same actually right with the use uh the attribution the the copy the resyndication the distribution of the data and everything so yeah and if you go on creative commons uh dot, dot org actually it's, you can see it's really simple you have a small uh wizard where actually you have to answer yes and no two times do you allow adaptation of your work to be shared with others yes no yes if they share with the same license do you allow commercial use of your work? Yes or no? Extremely simple. For all this license, you have also the attribution that is always at case that you have to to to, uh, to give the uh, the attribution of who made the uh, the asset. So if you say yes for adaptation of your work and for commercial work, you are attribution for that or international license. If you say no for adaptation to be shared, but still allow commercial use, it's the selected license called attributive no derivative 4.0 international. If you say no, uh, yes, as long as the other share alike, uh, you allow commercial use. Yes, you say it's attribution share alike international select license. And you can see the logos that actually explain you. It's Creative Commons, you have attribution, and you have to share alike with the, with the logo on the right. If you say yes, I can share, but no for a commercial use, you are selected license, attribution non commercial share alike for the international. But you can see a new logo with the dollar, which has a, a, a cross in front of it. You know, to really understand. So with these four logos, we can understand that it's Creative Commons, you have attribution, it's for non-commercial, but you have to share alike. It's extremely simple compared to really long license uh, uh, documents. What if we do that for APIs? Uh, funny enough, uh, on the power of Creative Commons, now they try to make it also some machine readability. You can fill out a, a machine readable metadata for HTML, or you can have this code to let visitor know that there are actually some uh, Creative Commons uh, license around that. So we start to have this machine readability. But with APIs, we can do that at the higher level. So like this, you can see an easy framework for must open to list open with at least some, uh, uh, with at least, you know, drawings that enable you to understand uh, really fast how it works. It's easy to generate, it's easy to read, and easy to understand. The goal is to do that for APIs. 
I, I, I hope you read this book from Lawrence Lessig about code and other laws of the cyberspace. He had this main idea that code is law. The code has its own, uh, the code provides its own law that actually uh, reigns on the infrastructure and that actually we need to understand. This is exactly what we try to do with APIs, right? The code in API, the term of services that are represented in APIs are the legal framework of the relationship. But we need also to ensure the remix aspect, you know, the fact that we can also reuse what has been shared in an economy of, you know, always adding value and not restricting value. So this is where actually the project is, is going. How we can build a creative commons for API term of services that as a contract to automatically read, control, and enforce API term of services between infrastructure and application. We have a huge digital infrastructure. We want, the sim we want to help people to answer the equation, which is really, really hard to answer. Can we use that API inside companies for developers uh, on their side projects? Can we use that API? Can this API uh, solve my problems? But also, is this API reliable on the long term? So this is why the Ford Foundation actually uh, had a $1.3 million in grants toward making the web's open infrastructure more equitable. And API TOS is one of these projects. There are actually uh, a dozen of projects selected for that. And the goal uh, is to continue the work that has been done previously by some other people. Uh, you can check the Swedish API license. It was an API license wizard to generate through a machine, through a wizard, uh, a term of services. It was you read like human readable machine of term of uh, human readable term of services, but machinely generated based on a wizard that helps you with just yes and no. You can generate term of services, but with APIs we, we can go further than that. So the project is ending its phase one now. We we made a lot of qualitative interviews. We set up the framework, and after this talk, the call to action is to help us to go in phase two of the quantitative feedbacks and propose it to the community. So. The goal, the problem with APIs, the challenge with APIs is that they have a lot more degrees of complexity than just, uh, you know, a share alike or just commercial attribution. They are a lot more degrees that needs to be understood. They represent a service with valuable capabilities that can be critical. So the contract is more important than just using an image or using a picture or video or not. And APIs are technical product and legal interfaces. So this triptych doesn't help. So new concepts have emerged from the interviews, the API neutrality principle. When you have no gatekeeper policy, when you allow even your competitors to use your API, you have you can consider it as neutral. You know, So it's quite safe to know that everybody can use this API without a potential revocation because of the same business model. Some infrastructure like AWS, Azure, or other, other are, doing, are, are doing this principle. And we also heard about the API copy left idea. That's an API provided Consuming, consuming another API must be published under the same term of services than consuming the API, or at least include some clause. For example, if you have an API that allow reuse, any reuse of the potential uh, data behind the scene, any API provided, again, consuming that API should allow, or at least must allow, uh, in the same idea, in the same clause, the ability to reuse without limitation. So these two ideas, were found from the interviews. And again, that was quite new compared to the current term of services. So yeah, so making API term of services human readable. On the business side, yes, there's the business model aspect, the reuse aspect, the commercial reuse aspect, the attribution and trademark, the API neutrality, the copyright, the counterpart that may be asked. So what do you, what would you put? on the different parts. So again, this is a draft. This is really working progress. And we're here to call for contribution. But just an example for the business model, yeah, it can be free, freemium, or paying. It can be a low free reuse, control reuse, or no reuse. It can be free commercial reuse, control commercial reuse, or no commercial reuse. Attribution and trademark. Do you need to attribute the work and mention that you are consuming data from this API, or do you don't need attribution? Are you neutral on APIs, you know, or, or do you select or, uh, people using your APIs or, or do you allow anyone to use it? Do you allow copyright act? Uh, do you enforce copyright uh, uh, rules or not? Do you need, do you ask comp counterparts to use the API or not, right? So that's the idea. Again, the goal of the framework was to reduce that to um, uh, something that's easily understandable, but just to tell you how complex it is so far.
That's for the business side. On the technical side, yes. Revocation policy, breaking change policy, standard level agreements, cacheability of the data, storage conditions, modification of the data, resyndication or authorization mechanism. Again, that can have different tiers. Revocation policy, that can be at any time for any reasons. Do you give a notice period or do you support a right once run forever policy? For standard level agreements, uh, for a breaking change notice, do you give notice? No. Do you have at least three months or less than three months? Or do you give a notice, you know, at least or at least three, mo three months? For SLAs, do you give compensation or not? Is there a specific SLA that is uh, contractually enforced? About cacheability of the data, do you allow, do you don't allow cacheability? Do you allow some caching or, or do you allow some caching? You can see that with storage, modification, resignation, authorization mechanism, you can see a lot of things actually with an API that, you know, with some logos that would help. And about the legal aspect, you know, about the liability of the info provided, are you liable or not? About the personal data access, is it personal identifiable information that have some uh, issues on, on, the, on the policy? Is it compliant on some uh, healthcare? API uh, regulation, regulation, or do you, does it have specific security certification? Again, that could be uh, part of the formula. So we need your help. We need your help to tell us what would be the potential impact on decision to an API versus the importance for API consumers. If it's high and high, it must be there. If it's a high impact but uh, low uh, importance, you know, do we include it? If it's high importance but low impact on decision, do we include it? And if it's low on both sides, it's probably not relevant. But we need to help you to help us to decide what we put in there. And the next step after that will be to make it machine readable. Because if we're able to find enough clothes with enough uh, uh, tiers, we can actually make them machine readable. And with the community, we will decide where these machine readable documents can be. Can Will there be a specific document on the side that can be linked to existing uh, documents? Can be integrated into API the JSON document that includes a lot of resources around an API? Or can it be at some point included directly in the API specification documents in a subsection like authorization, but now about uh, a term of services? Not just a link to term of services, but now the actually the close, the, uh, a sum up of the close of the term of services. I'll finish that there just to say, look, if we are able to do that, there may be a new business model called an API insurance. Just imagine a new API insurance startup that actually grants the contract and the term of services between an API consumer and an API provider. And actually, so in case of API default, the insurance will give money to replace the API with another provider. In, in exchange, the API consumer will pay an insurance policy for each API consumed. On the other side, the API provider will give guarantees about API term of service changes that will impose some penalties. But again, in, in exchange of that, the new API insurance startup or rating agency could audit and give ratings of trustworthiness to the API provider. So at the end, the API consumer and the API provider can contractualize an API space with safety re-enabling trust in the programmable economy. We have two minutes for questions, but if you want to contribute, donate or sponsor, or actually contribute to the quantitative approach. We invite you either to uh, contribute uh, uh, with money on opencollective.com uh, slash apiatos.cc, or if you want to be part of the research, if you want to uh, give your ideas or reshare maybe in your organization or in your community, I invite you to contact us on contact at apiatos.org. Thank you very much. And we'll be back uh, for questions. And we see some questions. How do I convince my leadership that an open source term of services should be applied from Kinlane? Uh, the, the thing, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, um, in my opinion, the thing, uh, how to convince my leadership that an open source term of services should be applied. The thing is, if you more open term of services will enable more transparency, so at the end, more trust. Uh, more trust into the ability to use you. Again, you can have a great, great service uh, that a lot of people want to use, but at some point, the API timer of services can be can be slowing the adoption for enterprise use uh, when you want to transform into 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 enterprise level uh, um, uh, customer. Uh, if if they are openly uh, shared, uh, if people know exactly that it's safe and 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 to work with you on this front, you remove a friction. So uh, people can onboard with you 
and contractualize with you easier, more easily than having weeks and weeks of discussion about uh, term of services that were, are not well understood on each side. I think, I hope I answered the question. Do we have another question? Not yet, but I think I'm exactly at the time. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, yeah, we invite you to uh, reach us on contact at for the phase two about reaching the whole community for feedbacks. Thank you.